Father, we give you all glory, honor, and praise. This evening, dear God, I lift your family before you in your presence, oh God, Lord. Father, and I place them in your hands because we know that your hands are safe hands. If you hold them, no man can pluck them off, out of your hands, oh God. This evening, oh God, where they are weak, I ask you to strengthen them, and where they are strong, make them more strong, oh God. In the time of bereavement, in the time of sadness, oh God, you say that you're going to turn this sadness into joy, oh God, in the morning to laughter, oh God. Father, I ask you to build a hedge around them, oh God. I ask you to come before them, after them, above them, beneath them, with them, and through them, in the name of Jesus Christ. Let your mighty will be done in the life, oh God, Lord. Father, I ask you to strengthen them at this time, oh God. Let your Holy Spirit encamp around them, oh God, in the name of Jesus Christ. I thank you for what you're about to do, oh God, because I know that you sit high and you look low, God. And there's nothing that is impossible with you. All things are possible, oh God. And this sin, I place them in your hands and I ask you to have your way. In Jesus' name we pray as we all say, Amen. Praise the name, praise the name of the Lord. We're going to remain standing as we sing Amazing Grace this afternoon. Hallelujah. Amazing Grace, how sweet the song that saved. A wretch like me, I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. Was great. That taught my heart to fear and grace, my fear really. How precious did that grace appear? The hour. I first believe Through many days The toil and sin I have already come This grace that brought me saved us from and great will me home. The Lord has promised good to me His word my hope secure he will my shield and portion be as long as life endure yeah when this heart and flesh shall fail, and more till I shall see. I shall present within thy a life of joy and peace. When we have been there ten thousand years, bright shine, nay, not the sun. We have no less day to sing God's praise than when. We first begun. Praise God, 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 praise God. 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 Praise God.
Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. You may have a seat. Hallelujah. The hymn writer say, Amazing Grace. How sweet the song. That save a wretch like me, I was once was lost. But now I'm found, I once was blind. But now I can see. Amen. So this time I'm going to read the scripture reading, which will be taken from the book of John chapter 14 from verse 1. And it read, Let not your heart be troubled. He believe in God, believe also in me. In my father's house there are many mansions, and if it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you, and if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there he may be also. And where I go, he know, and the way he know. Thomas said unto him, Lord, we, not, we, we know not whether thou goest, how can we know the way? Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Praise be to God. Hallelujah. At this time, we're going to have the eulogy to be read by Gregory. Then we check. Praise the Lord. Good morning. All right. You know, um, why is we waiting for the eulogy? I just want to say a piece. You know, uh, Mama, as we must call her, you know, um, well, we are from the New Birth Church of God, my Bishop, Bishop Alan Marisho, my Pastor, Pastor Mary Marisho, and I am Brother Kevin, as everybody might know. But um, this lady that today we're celebrating the life of her, you know, um, is a soft-spoken person, you know. I remember she coming to church with Sister Dominga, and um, if you ask her how she going, Mama, how are you going? I good, I good. I know, and everything, she good. And not one day she show any pain or any illness you know, every time you ask her, she good. And you know, this is a, a page, when I was speaking to my wife before I leave, I said, this is a page we need to take from some people. Anytime people ask you how you're going, you're good. Because sometimes, you know, even though you cry out to them, they might not understand. But when you're in the arms of God, he say you're going to make the weak strong, you're going to make the blind see, and you're going to even make the dead rise. So every time I ask her, and she have a soft voice, are good. And are good. And even today, when I watch her in, her box, in the box with a pleasant face, I still, she might, I still find she might say, she good. Because she gone in a better place. Praise the name of the Lord. So today, are we really celebrating the life of this young lady? And to know, only to learn how she celebrated 90 years. I know the Bible said three scores and ten is the lifespan of a man. But by the grace of God and by his favor, he's going to extend life to you. And God had really extended life to her because of the favor of God and his mercy towards her. So today we're celebrating the life of Mama. Amen? So I believe the person to read the eulogy had returned, so I would like to invite him to do so now in Jesus' name. Pleasant good afternoon to all in attendance. Thank you for taking time off from your busy schedule to be with us as you celebrate the life of my mother, Gertrude Galera, also known as Mapoyo or Mama, a remarkable woman in many ways. I am standing before you heartbroken and proud at the same time. I use the words, the word heartbroken because I'm torn between being sad and comforted. Sad because 
of the loss of my mother. And comforted because I knew she is with her maker right now because of the life that she lived. Gertrude was a strong, independent woman. She was a jack of all trades. She did everything for herself. She was a seamstress. She was a carpenter, a mason. If it had cut glass in to do, she will do it. She was very gifted with her hands also. She made plastic flowers out of switching bottles. Right? She made flowers also out of paper, string art, which she all taught to her grandchildren. Her sponge cake was spongy and golden yellow. It was really different. I haven't seen that texture anywhere else. Her pastels. Her pastel is, was also one of the best. She made a flower pastel. And only up to recently, we order in pastel. And the people don't know how to make a flower pastel. Right? I, she, she made it, and she made it excellent. My family and I was always fortunate and lucky that every Christmas morning, as soon as she completed making the pastel, she would walk, walk across by us and give us for everyone home, which we were more than thankful. Gertrude was a biological mother of 11 children and mother of many more. She loved all her children. No one was ever treated in any extra special way. She was a disciplinarian and never afraid to show us tough love. But as a youth, sometimes we thought she was harsh, not knowing she was molding us to face life as an adult in the future. Now, as I, am, as I have my own family, I understand some of the decisions she was making then. I owe all to my mother for whom I am today, as it was she who molded my life. I am proud of that. I'll give you all two quick examples of situations that happen that have a lasting long effect on my life, even up to today. The first one, I was about 16, 17, and one of my elder brothers got me a weekend job to go and pluck chicken. So I went with him and plucked the chicken on the Saturday and the Sunday, came home, proud, showing mommy, hey, look, look at the money that I made. She said, Gregory, once you're living in this house and you're working, no matter how small, you must make a contribution. She said, you'll take another part and save it. And the third part, spend it, but spend it wisely. That was the first incident. The second incident, which I remember clearly, was an earliest night in Arima, in Mount Pleasant, in the house, where we were all, as a family, lying laughing, watching TV, waiting for the New Year's to, to hit us or to dawn on us. And while we were there, we were, the younger ones were offered or given one, probably two drinks, of Francis cast wine, which was on, on the table, and the harder stuff was for the adult. I can clearly remember they asking us to walk on a straight line. You know, the bigger brothers and them. And because the board floor was about four inches or six inches wide, so, you know, we tried. But to be honest with you, I can't remember when Olias finished or when New Year's finish. 
I knew when I got up the next morning at about half past eight or so, because it was done bright early, she was at the back of the house washing. And as we came out of the bedroom, the back door was right there. And I said, Mommy, I'm feeling sick. Headache, belly pain, and vomit all over my skin. She said, Gregory, you were big enough to drink. You're big enough to clean up your mess. So go and clean it up right now with no help. I had no other choice. Headache gone, belly pain gone. I just go and unsew the bathroom pillow, put it to dry, unsew the fiber mattress, to remove that fiber, put it to dry, wash everything from pillow bag, coverlet, bed sheet, mattress cloth, everything. Nine done. When it dry, I just pack back everything. Pack back the bathroom pillow and sew them. The fiber mattress, well, the young ones might know about it, but you had to beat the fiber. You had to take a crook stick, hook it, and beat it with another to liven it back up, pack it back in the mattress, and sew it. Right? I'll tell you, these two examples taught me lifelong responsibilities, which is you are responsible for your actions. These responsibilities was passed on to my kids. You want to hear a little secret out of that whole scenario? Up to today, Gregory never get drunk again, you know. Have a drink. By the time I start to feel a little, I'm done. And nobody could get me to drink. Huh? Okay. I uh, don't know if I missed all this piece, so just excuse me if I repeat it. Um, Gertrude, she was the biological mother of 11, is that? Sorry, okay. She was a disciplinarian, and she was never afraid to show tough love. So as a youth, we were taught she was harsh, but we didn't know she was just molding us to face life in the future. Okay, before I close, let me take this time to publicly thank all those who assisted with, with the care and comfort for my mother. Some assisted through prayers. Some assisted through counseling, through one far better word right now. And, and some contributed financially. She was bedridden for a while, Up about five years, three years, all right. During that three years, I would like to say a special, special thank you to, I'll say these three young ladies who ensured my mother was always comfortable, that she was fed, that she was cleaned, that she was given her medication on time. And they even slept at her at times to keep her company 24 hours a day, 365 days for the year. And these are my elder sister, Dominga, my younger sister, Sharon, and my niece, Laura. Thank you, thank you very much for all what you all did. In closing, Gertrude as I fondly used to call you. I feel humble and privileged to be loved by you and to be called your son. You have always loved us. I will miss your yellow sponge cake, your pastels, roasted breadfruit. I will miss you forever. You were the best mother anyone could have wished for. Rest in peace. Good day. Praise the Lord. That's the eulogy for the life of BBC sister. At this time, um, you know, uh, I like to leave 
that's a little opening for any, if anyone want to say anything. All right, so that's a little opening. If there's anyone want to, would like to say anything, you can come now and do so. And there's, if there's none, we'll continue with the, with the service this afternoon. All right, there's none. I believe um, Gregory said it all in. You know, um, I sit down there and I listen to him, and, you know, one thing he said with the drinking, and I laugh in my mind, because I say after I had to do all that after, bet your dollar you wouldn't drink again, or you wouldn't get drunk again. Because all these things you had to do after, but, you know, um, it's about old people saying, or old saying, memory live longer than people do. And I know that this memory will live on with you until you're alive, because she had taught you well, she have growing you well and you know I, I heard that you speak about thanking the, the sisters and the nieces but you know um, I have a little story I heard once that you know when, when you're young when you're a baby your, your mother will hold you and, and mold you and comfort you and after time when they grow old you are sure need to hold them and comfort them also because when, they, when you needed them they was there for you and they need you now and you're supposed to be there for them and only to learn this and to hear this, this is something to make us proud. They know that the children take good care of mommy because once they learn that she take good care of them. Amen? So here today we read from the book of John 14, let not our heart be troubled. And this is a, is a simple message because as believer, we need to know who our God is. Our God is mighty the same and he's strong to deliver. And the Bible says, let not our heart be troubled. If we believe in God, Believe also in me, which is Jesus Christ. So if we believe in God today, we need to believe also in Jesus Christ. Because God, he said that in my father's house, there are many mansions there. And you know, if we describe that mansion, I think you have no mansion in the world to, to class with the mansion of Jesus Christ. He said, in my father's house, there are many mansions there. And if it were not so, I would have told you. And they're just telling us, listen, God is no liar. Jesus Christ is no liar. He's the truth. Can the Bible say, if it were not so, I would have told you. But I go to prepare a place for you. That where I am, there you may be also. And I pause there for just a second or two because that may word is not a surety word when it comes to you and I. That may word, he didn't say you will be there with me. No. He said may be there with me. So then it's telling us that we have a choice. We have a choice that I will live for Jesus Christ or we live for the world. Because the time will come that, listen, you and I will be lying in that box one day to come. But where will we spend eternal life? It's about the choice you make in life. Is that I accept Jesus Christ as a person, Lord and Savior, just as Mama did because she accepted him and said, God, I'm going to live for you. That's why today she died at the age of 90. And today when we watch younger people, the Bible says that, that, listen, it's supposed to be the old lime, lime jumping before the young and now the young, young lime jumping before the ripe lime. Because you know why? We lost the direction of Jesus Christ. We lost this and everything is, is internet and technology and, and, and what our phones say and what they say. We forget about hearing from Jesus Christ. We forget about what Jesus Christ is telling us. That live for him. Serve him in spirit and in truth. And if you serve him in spirit and in truth, then heaven will be your home. No doubt about it. Two words before us. Make our choice. Oftentimes I say in final, we can't preach for the dead. She already gone. She already gone. The Bible says they have no remembrance. The dead can't praise God. It's we that are alive. The Bible says let everything that have breath praise in the name of the Lord. And we need to praise God. We need to know who we're standing for. We need to know who we're serving. We need to know who we're living for. Because I want to tell you, listen, this is the time. This is the last days. I heard when I was younger, my, my, my father said, listen, the times are at hand. And I reach a little younger, a little older, and the times are still at hand. But what I'm saying, our road will soon come to an end. Because this is world without end. So he's going to say that, and, and, and Thomas had a problem. Thomas said unto him, Thou, we know not whether you, when you go, how can we know the way? And Jesus said it to them, because the disciples were the Jesus all the way. He picked them. And yet still it had one was doubting. It had one was there and still doubting and said, if you go, how will you know the way? And Jesus watched him and said, listen, I want to tell you something today. I am the way, the truth, and the life. And I want to extend it a little bit. I am the only sway. The truth and the life. There is no other way you can come unto the Father but through me, which is Jesus Christ. 
So I want to tell you today, there is no other way. You can't go to the front door. You can't go to the back door. You can't go to a window. You can't go to the, you can't go to the little vent in, in the toilet. You can only go to Jesus Christ. And the only way you can go to Jesus Christ is accepting him by water baptism. And living for him in spirit and in truth. He said, I'm the way. The only way. In the book of 1 Thessalonians 4, it says, Heaven, I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning she that are asleep. For when the trump of God shall sound, the dead in Christ shall rise first. And we can't prevent them. We can't prevent them. We can't stop them. If you die in Christ, you're going to rise in Christ. He said, If you suffer with me, you're going to reign with me. So you can't prevent them. And, and this is the promise that God gave unto us. And I, I believe we need to hold on to the promises of Almighty God. He said, You can't prevent them that are asleep. That when the trump of God shall sound the dead in Christ shall rise for them, we that remain, if we remain alive, shall be caught up together with them. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. And the last verse in that chapter says, Heaven, wherefore comfort one another with his words. And today we're comforting you and we're comforting one another with these days. Listen, there is hope. There is life after death. Believe it or not, there is life after death. But God came here. Jesus Christ sent his only begotten son to die for us. That we have an opportunity to inherit life after death. We need to make our choice. Two rules before us. Make our choice. Today, we speak to the living. We speak to the listen. If you didn't know Jesus Christ, there's now the time to know him. I often tell people, I mean, in this corona pandemic time, listen, it's one of, I believe one of the first time as a young person. Because oftentimes I, I told my wife, I said, listen, if, if we get through this one, if we, if we get over this one, if God be merciful and gracious us and, and we pass over this one, listen, we need to serve God more than ever. Because I told people, this one has no, no rich, no poor, no young, no old. Because if the rich could have buy over the sickness, they'd have run and buy over the sickness and, and they'd have been good. Because when a rich man had gone, he go and take, put in a heart and he lived for years. But the rich dying also, the poor dying also. But when we die, we need to know who we die in. And if we die in Christ, we're going to rise with him. And we're going to spend eternal life with him. Because I want to tell you, there's a place that prepares for the devil and his wicked angel and they call it hell. And the Bible says that the worm does not, quen the worm does not die, nor the fire does not quench. And listen, day and night... Day and night in fire. And if you put your day and night in fire, you, you might just get a little burn with a little hot water and you might be, oh God, a little burn, oh God, it's so hot. Put your day and night in fire. So let us make the right choice. Let us try to serve God in spirit and truth. For Sister Dominga and his sisters, you know, I know that Sister Dominga, Sister Dominga loved God, really loved God. I know that for sure she served God in spirit and the truth, you know, and, and this is the value of life that I believe that the mother hand down to her, even the rest of siblings, because to hear the young man speak, so great about the mother, knowing that, you know, what she, what she learn is what she teach them. And what she teach them is what they're teaching the children today. And I believe there's very few family you have like this to take the, the teaching of, of the mother to hand down and then to hand it down to your own children. So I want to tell you, God bless you and stay strong in the name of Jesus Christ. Stay strong. I know that God's going to comfort you in this time. Amen? Because he say he will leave you, neither forsake you, but he's going to be with you even unto the end. Amen? So let us all stand once more. I believe that still I will call once more if there's anyone want to say anything. And you can come and do so now. If not, we're going to continue with the service in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. All right. Um, <clears throat> I see a song here, Come Home, Zion Wonders. All right. I believe Sister Dominga, you want to raise it? Praise the Lord. All right, we're going to sing um, some glad morning when this life is over. Praise the name of God. Some glad morning when this life is over, I fly away to the home of God's blessed song. I fly away. I fly away, O oh glory, I fly away. When I die, hallelujah, by and by, I fly away. I fly away, O oh glory, I fly away. When I die, hallelujah, by and by, I fly away. There's a 
more weary days and then I fly away to a land where joy will never end. I fly away. I fly away, oh glory. I fly away. When I die, hallelujah, by and by, I fly away. I fly away, oh. I fly away. When I die, hallelujah, by and by, I fly away. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. So at this time, I will ask the family of the deceased to come forward. We would like to offer a word of prayer for you in the name of Jesus Christ. So the family of the deceased, can please come forward where we can offer a word of prayer for you in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Um, for those that come, came to support, could you just stretch your hands to this family? Praise the name of the Lord in agreement, asking God to strengthen them. Almighty God, we bring this family before you at this present time, O oh God. Father, and we lift them up before your throne, and we ask you today to strengthen them where they are weak, and we are strong, make them more stronger, God. We ask you to bind them together as a bundle stick, which shall never be broken, O God. Let your Holy Spirit, O God, encamp around them, O God, Lord. From the greatest to the least, from the oldest to the youngest, O God, you know their heart, O God, because you know you are the reader of mine and you are the searcher of heart, O God. And today I ask you to strengthen them, O God. I ask you to keep them. I ask you to cover them, O God. I ask you to protect them in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, today they lose a mother, a grandmother, an auntie, O God, a great grandmother, O God. But Lord, they gain you, O God, because in you there is life and life more abundant. Abundantly, O oh God. And Father, this season, O oh God, I lift them before your throne, O oh God. And I ask you to have your way in their life, O oh God, from this time, O oh God, and towards, O oh God. Father, we ask you to tell, O oh God, to take charge over them in the name of Jesus Christ. And let your mighty will be done in their life. In Jesus' name, as we all say, Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Uh, before I close prayer, I, I saw um, my pastor from the New Book Church of God, that's one to recognize her, Pastor Mary Mary Show. So welcome this evening in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. As we repeat the Our Father prayer this evening, and we say, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses. As we forgive those that trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from all evil. For thy is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, and forever and ever, as we all say, Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. So we have the opening a box again, and we just come and view, and then we'll go down to the cemetery in Turi for burial. Zion wanderers, come home. Zion wanderers, Jesus calling you. Come home, Zion wanderers, come home. Zion wanderers, come home. Zion wanderers, Jesus calling you. Come on, Zion wanderers, come on. Zion wanderers. Zion wanderers, Jesus calling you. Praise the Lord. Zion wanderers. Come on, hey, wait again. Jesus calling you. Come on, Zion Wanderers. Come on, Zion Wanderers. Come on, Zion Wanderers. Jesus calling you. Come on, Zion Wanderers. Come on, Zion Wanderers. Come on, Zion Wanderers. Come
Goodbye is the saddest 
Yes.
Didn't know today would be your last Or that I'd have to say goodbye to you so fast I'm so numb I can't feel anymore I'm praying you just walk back through that door and tell me that I was only dreaming You're not really gone as long as I believe There will be another angel Around the throne tonight Your love lives on inside of me And I will hold on tight not my place to question Only God knows why I'm just jealous of the angels Around the throne tonight I've always made my Troubles feel so small And you were always there to catch me When I'd fall In a world where heroes come and go Where God just took the only one I know so I'll hold you as close as I can Longing for the day when I see your face again But until then, God must need another angel around the throne tonight Love lives on inside of me And I will hold on tight It's not my place to question Only God knows why I'm just jealous of the angels Around the throne tonight Singing hallelujah I 
Your throne and she cut your hair. 